Hey everyone, we're at the NZXT suite now at CES 2018. We're going to look at something we didn't get a chance to look at before leaving for CES, which is the BIOS for the new N7 motherboard. This is the motherboard we previously did a video on the hardware side of it. Uh, it's called the N7. It's a $300 Z370 motherboard for Intel platforms. And a lot of the price is derived from the integrated RGB and fan controllers, the Hue and the Grid products that are basically sold separately but integrated as opposed to higher-end VRMs and things like that. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Flow Liquid Cooler. The Flow is a 360 millimeter radiator with three RIN RGB LED fans. You can program the fans for custom lighting through software and then of course benefit from the larger radiator size in cooling performance. Learn more at the link in the description below. So the board doesn't take quite the same approach as most of the $300 boards we've looked at, which means the BIOS is going to be a little bit more basic, but uh, it's trying to solve different problems. We'll talk about that more in the review when the time comes for that after the show. For now, though, I did want to go through BIOS and show off what we haven't gotten to show. Uh, this is the basic BIOS. Most motherboards have one at this point, and it's... I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. You have a normal mode and a performance mode, and it's got a graphic icon indicator, and that's about the end of that side of things. Uh, performance just pre-overclocks it. I would assume it's using a lookup table like every other mo motherboard for a pre-overclock setting on the CPU that's installed, which in this case is an 8700K. And you've got time, some voltages, and that's, that's most of it, boot order as well. If we go over to advanced mode, we get to the more interesting stuff, and that will uh, you start off with a, a standard main tab right here so nothing special there time language uh, we go over to cpu and ram is where most of the action is so cpu settings is uh you've got standard eist turbo boost all these pretty standard features to have from intel there are power limit overrides and i i guess I think you can you can straight disable them, which is always good. I don't know to what the different power limits correspond. Uh, so there's one, two, three, and four. We'll figure that out later. But uh, you've got four power limits. I would assume one is probably a core power or core current or something like that. Normally you can you can toggle the uh, current limits for overclocking purposes. But you go in here and then you can set in uh, either just straight disable it or type in a manual number, which in this case is input in milliwatts, uh, so you can limit the wattage going to whatever device power limit three is in this case. TDP locks here as well, uh, nothing too special there. Ratios, as expected, you can just manually set either the all core ratio, so we go to 50 if, if the CPU could support 50, I'm not sure if it does, um, which is more CPU thing, but CPU ratio for all of them, or you just manually enter over here. Uh, there's a couple a couple changes that I think may still be in the pipe, so we'll look at that more later. Uh, rain ratio you also have, which is good, so we can set rain ratio. Uh, and BCLK was in there as well, but it is in one one hundredth of a megahertz increments, which is a bit different. Typically, you have like one hundred point one or one hundred point five or whatever. So this one's one one hundredth. Divide all your numbers accordingly, and uh, and same idea overall. Memory settings. This is where motherboards really differentiate themselves in terms of overclocking support, but 90% uh, of users probably never really go through these. So there is, you just go to default XMP as expected or custom. And for custom, uh, there's not a, I mean, to call out a couple items here, TRFC is in here, TREFI is in here. So those are both good things that you want to have access to for, uh, for overclocking purposes. It's missing a couple of the really low level sub timings. Um, but uh, again, it's not really the point of the board to target that type of thing. So kind of up to you how important that is. If, if it's really important, then buy a different motherboard. But uh, GT Slice is in here. That's not actually something we use very often or see very often. Uh, that's for the integrated graphics voltages. CPU voltages are present. So you can auto set or you can go through a list. Uh, so rather than typing in right now, you go through a list and 0 0.05 increments all the way down. I think it's all the way down. Yes, 0 0.05 all the way through uh, to two volts, which of course you should never set unless you you really know what you're doing with uh, liquid nitrogen or liquid helium. Other than that, uh, VCC SA. So SA is in here. That's good. I would like to see some more granularity in here or just manual typing of the number because 1.66, 1.695, kind of a big jump. You shouldn't really be going that high anyway. Uh, typically, once you're at, there's no 1.40 either. I'd like to see that. That's about my stopping point for SA voltages because that's when things start to die very quickly. 
IO uh, goes all the way to, I think it goes pretty much where we want it. Yeah, one, no 1.40 on one this one either, uh, or 1.35, but it's got every other number in increments of 0 0.02. And dim voltages are also present. This is actually good, I like this. Uh, so it actually will, instead of putting auto at the top, it puts auto where the present voltage setting is for the dims, which in this case is 1.218. So we're getting an auto between one point in that general area. I guess right here would technically would be it. But uh, red for it probably won't boot at this voltage. Yellow for it maybe won't boot at this voltage because it's too low. And on the opposite end of the scale, uh, the other way, red or yellow, because it's getting dangerous territory theoretically. And this, all motherboards do this too, where they don't actually really know where it gets dangerous or not. Uh, they just take a best guess. This isn't just NZXT. That's, that's how everyone does it because it's unreasonable to assume otherwise. Uh, so they're just giving you guidelines as in don't don't go red unless you know what you're doing. Uncore is present. So there's an uncore voltage offset, which is also good. Um, and that's really most of it. So that's that's most the lower level settings. There's I don't you can toggle multi-monitor for the IGP. You're not really going to be buying this board for mining, so you don't need the 4G decode support because no one would buy a $300 board for mining with... Uh, well, this it's clearly not targeted for that. Advanced setting, CPU, tip, typical disable hyperthreading, change which cores are active. Uh, there's some C state stuff, so you can mess around with that if you want to, or just straight disable it elsewhere. And I think might be a couple other things. Uh, fan control. So this is kind of I like this. Uh, at first, I was kind of like, wait a minute, this is weird. But if you think about it, this board supports something like nine fans through the grid controller, and so they've got a a drop down menu more or less where you can select each fan which is labeled according to the motherboard headers so this is preferable in this situation because if you had nine fans listed with every one of these settings four of those all the way down it'd be huge and take you forever to get through so i do like that choice uh, asus gets a little bit difficult to navigate sometimes for that reason and then you can use cam to override everything else if you prefer going that route I don't know that there's a lot else to show in this BIOS. I think that's pretty much most of it. So um, there is a, there's per core overclocking if you want that, a couple chipset options, and then you can just go back to the basic mode for the pre-OC, which we haven't, uh, haven't really looked at too much yet, but it does apply an OC to individual cores, which tells me it's probably a, a lookup table. So pretty standard for that. Uh, and then we'll look at the rest as the show concludes here. So we've got a full review coming eventually of the NZXT N7. For now, there's your look at BIOS. Pretty much most of the options for uh, kind of more casual users are there if you're looking for something aesthetics focused. And then uh, we've talked to them about a couple of suggestions for more granularity and a couple of the existing options. So we'll let you know how it goes. But if you want more information, click on the link in the description below for the original video where we showed the motherboard itself and talked about the hardware and including some of the VRM information. Subscribe for more as always, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. I'll see you all next time.